In this vlog, my Husqvarna Vitpilin 401 transforms into a mountain bike transporter. I ride my motorcycle, I fix some mountain bike jumps, and I ride some mountain bike jumps behind these kids. If you're not into any of that, don't watch this video. It's that simple. Really, really great, amazing news to come out of the Spindat shop right now. The Vitpilin. The Vitpilin is back. of you follow me on Instagram and I've already posted a short of uh, the thing on this that this was a way for the winter to get built but uh, for those of you who don't know right around December possibly January sometime I contracted my friend Devin at Wiley Fab here on Instagram give him a follow if you don't mind to build fabricate and bring to reality a bit of a dream that I've had on this channel for the last 10 years or so a custom bike rack to bring my bicycle on my motorcycle come Two wheel inception going on here. Oh my gosh, is it sick? So it'll do my BMX, my turn jumper. I don't think I, actually don't think I would ever do this, but technically my slope Duro will go on there, but yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. But for the last three days where I have used it every day, going up to the Mount Edwards dirt jumps, bringing my dirt jumper along. It's been incredibly sturdy, stable, and uh, has given me no issues whatsoever. So slowly but surely, it's just becoming this like second nature thing to ride with a, uh, a bicycle on the back. It definitely does affect the ride having a bicycle on the back, but not to the detriment of anything. It's just something that you gotta like be conscious of while you're riding. Now, one really important thing that I was being very conscious and mindful of, and I'm super proud at how the actual execution of the design came out was, was uh, being able to like stab it on really quickly and take it off really quick. I didn't want it to be a pain to have it on or take it off. I just didn't want it to live on the bike always. Like the only time that it should be on is if a bicycle's going with me somewhere. Otherwise it like, it has to come off and to live that way, it cannot be a pain. So my original idea that Devin executed perfectly was two separate pieces, a subframe that lives on the bike always. And that is on the bike with four like pretty sturdy six millimeter bolts tightened down good and hard. It's not going anywhere. And then on that subframe at the front, I wanted these permanent pins that would be here always and then threaded nuts on the back of the subframe so you're only ever having to put two bolts in whenever you're putting something on. Just less, less turns of anything is quicker setup. And for the rack itself, I wanted to do a dropout style at the front. This slides into the pins. As you drop it down, you put your bolts through, tighten it down, and it's good to go. So just a matter of putting this dropout into this pin, lining up the other side, putting two bolts through. It's really quite quick and painless, but I don't know exactly how quick. So I'm gonna do a little, a little time challenge here just to see, just to see. Okay, timer start.
with a screw up. One minute, 96 milliseconds. Okay, well it's on now and it's super, super nice out, so. You know what that means. They set up this shot like way after the fact because there's people here originally, but they said they said it was okay to do. What's up? <laughs> right, so last week we were in here and uh, actually, you know what? I took a bunch of footage of it. I'll just put it in the video right now and you'll be up to speed and then we'll talk about it some more. All right, kind of picking up at a much better place than where we left off in 2023 with our home base of dirt jumping here in Dartmouth, Mount Edwards Dirt Jump Park. It's early spring, April 11th today. The jumps are looking, the jumps are looking okay. Definitely some people have been riding them in the wet. Honestly, whatever, I get it, that's fine. The biggest thing that is kind of a bummer is just how much rock has kind of made its way out. All of these, while we were riding them, were so smooth and uh, had nice, just nice dirt covering all that stuff. So uh, definitely looking forward to getting it back into that state. Just get all this, all this stuff. You rake that up, shovel it, throw it back up on there. Should, should work pretty good. The lips are still in pretty, pretty good like shape, shape wise. This third jump here is probably the worst of it. This, honestly, it looks like people have been skidding up it or like sliding down it. That's okay, we'll fix it, we'll maintain it throughout the year. The hip, actually the hip's in pretty rough shape as well. But we're gonna do, uh, well, I'm here alone right now, I actually don't know who's gonna show up tonight, but I'm gonna just start kinda like picking away at this, try and get everything smooth again, try and build everything back up, get us started for, uh, you know, warmer days to come, which seem like they're right around the corner, and just, you know, start the year off right. Not, not do dirt jumping in September, start like end of April and ride all the way to November. Here we go, here we go! And yes, the medium line and the small line will get some love as well, but this is my obsession. You gotta, you gotta make sure these are good because these look cool to ride. These get people into it who want to ride this. You get it. I think because it's the worst of it, I'm gonna start with this third one, try and rake some of these rocks out and then get some of this stuff and then get some of this stuff back up there. Work in progress, coming together. It's about as good as I'm uh, willing to get it with the tools that I brought. Didn't realize that all the shovels here had uh, disappeared. Logan's got the rake going on the landing on the second one. And it looks great. I think so. I like the rake idea. I'm gonna do the same to this landing because, uh, well, it just makes quick work of it. Take all these big rocks out, bring some of this dirt up into it. And then we're gonna get a bunch of rain tomorrow anyway, so it's gonna set us back a little bit, but that's fine, it's fine.
So I think like two nights later, a few of the guys came out and finished up the lip of that jump. This was already ready. That got finished. The hip got, I say finished, like basically got it ready so that we could just get started riding here earlier than it's ever happened. Usually it's like midsummer, almost end of season that we get to start riding here. And it's April now. They're a little wet today from the rain last night. So I expect them to kind of ride a little bit slow, but so nice that I'm gonna do it anyway. It's so sketchy when you do Okay, you guys ready to do a train or what? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go behind you. I, I can clear the last one, I think. I right. can clear. I'll give you some space. I've cleared the second one. Uh, ready? Yeah. Go. Go. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Cleared everything? Nice, man. Thank you. Yeah, they are soft, but it's still fun to be out. Okay, that's kind of the end of this one. It's a little all over the place, but you know, it's kind of what you've come to expect and maybe even love from SpinDat content. A um, couple, couple super thanks to uh, feed Norton Biscuits with and then, and then the video's done. I'm thinking about opening channel memberships on here to be able to do more stuff like this quicker instead of trying to fund it with just AdSense. So if you were a Patreon supporter before and you were looking for a way to do that again, uh, just like, let me know if it's something that you're maybe interested in supporting again in the comments below. It's something I feel really incredibly uncomfortable and weird asking for support for, but, uh, you know, being able to do stuff like this and being able to get it out in a timely fashion is, is also cool. So I, I don't know. Let's go give Norton some treats and then this video is over.